Hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Rachel Bloom with the CSU Alumni Association, and I am so glad that you're here for our Farmers Market Series event, Meet Me at the Farmers Market. I hope that you enjoy tonight's content and also that you check out our last event in the series, June 1st, which is Produce Tips and Tricks. It'll be all about learning how to pick out that awesome produce at your local farmer's market and some great tips for how to use it. Um, and just a friendly reminder, we do record these webinars. So if you ever want to reference the content again, definitely go ahead and check out our YouTube channel and be sure to subscribe while you're there as well. We'll go ahead and move to the next slide. I do want to give a big thank you to our session sponsors, the Fort Collins Area Chamber of Commerce and NOCO Virtual Farmers Market. I will include their information in the chat here shortly as well for you if you want to check them out. I also want to thank all of you for participating today. So please feel free to put in the chat where you're watching from, what year you graduated. Be sure to click all panelists and attendees so everybody can see your message. But wherever you may be tuning in from, we're very glad that you're here. As a reminder, you are in a webinar, so we cannot hear or see you in case you're eating dinner, you go ahead and enjoy, but please use the chat feature to communicate with us or the Q&A feature to ask any questions for our awesome speaker, Allison. We can move to the next slide because we have to mention our awesome CSU Alumni Association members. Thank you so much for your membership. It makes events like this possible, and I'll include more information about membership in the chat for you. You can also scan this QR code and it'll take you directly to find out a little bit more. And if we go to the next slide, we of course have to mention all of our awesome membership benefits uh, and making sure your RAM pride remains strong. So thank you so much to those who are members. And if you have any questions about membership, please feel free to let me know. I would be very happy to connect with you. I'll also include in the chat my contact information if you have any trouble with technology, as well as we have a few virtual events coming up on the CSU Alumni Association's calendar. So I'll provide that link to that website. And then of course, we'll send out the recording to this webinar and some additional resources. So be on the lookout for that later this week or early next week. And of course, I always have to plug, we'll have a survey. So if you wanna give us some feedback, let us know what other topics you'd love to see for virtual programming we would greatly appreciate your feedback. So I'll go to the next slide because you are here to listen to our wonderful speaker. We have Allison O'Connor here this evening with us to talk about farmer's markets. And I'm super excited for this content. Allison, thank you so much for taking the time out of your evening to be here with us. Thank you, Rachel. Appreciate being here and hi to everybody. I am Allison with the CSU Extension Office in Larimer County and I'm the horticulture agent. Proud Ram. I graduated with my PhD in 2014 and so I'm really excited to not only work for the university but also be an alumni. And tonight what we're going to talk about is everything farmers market. So if this is one of your favorite activities to do, during the summer, the spring, even in winter at a year round market, you can hopefully gather some information and learn a little bit more. I just wanted to kick things off by talking about what extension is. And if you're not familiar with what we are, or what we do, we are the outreach arm of your land grant institution, which is Colorado State University. And so if you're in Colorado, CSU is your land grant institution. If you're joining us from another state, you also have a land grant that has extension affiliated with it. Essentially what we do is we take all of that amazing research that is uh, done on campus and at the research stations, and then we bring it back to you where you can use it in your everyday life. If you were a 4-H member, you were part of extension. If you're a master gardener, or you've taken a class on food preservation or food safety, Oftentimes, those are also linked to your land-grant institution. We are an unbiased, research-based, full of information university that you can get information from. We never want to sell you anything. And so what we really want to do is help you be successful, whatever it is. So my focus is horticulture. I work with the green industry. I also coordinate the Larimer County Master Gardener Program. And I teach a lot of classes on gardening. So I'm thrilled tonight to talk about farmer's markets because I don't get to talk about it that much, but I do help run a farmer's market with Emily Alley Good in our office. So if you joined us a couple of weeks ago, Emily talked about our market specifically. 
And I'll cover some of those things, but I'll also talk about markets in general. One thing I do want to call to your attention is the super amazing Grow and Give program. This started last year in response to the pandemic. And what we found is that people started gardening more. So in terms of getting horticulture in the hands of people who maybe hadn't had a garden in the past, what this program did is it became a modern victory garden approach. And we encouraged people to whatever they were growing in their backyards, if they had extra to donate, we encouraged them to give it to their local food banks, their churches, uh, neighbors in need, anywhere that they donated. So we just encourage people to grow and then give what they could. We are continuing this program in 2021 and you can register at growandgivecolorado.org. Find your local county, you can register through them and it doesn't matter if you only have one tomato plant on your patio. If you're not able to eat all of those tomatoes, please consider donating it. We have seen a huge increase in food insecurity among Coloradans and across the United States due to the pandemic. It's estimated right now that about a quarter to a third of all Coloradans are suffering from food insecurity where they just don't have enough. And having fresh produce really does make a difference in people's lives and their diets and keeping them healthy. So really please consider joining this program. If you're in Larimer County, we actually are coordinating a drop-off event. So if you can't make it to the food bank, that's absolutely okay. We're going to have master gardeners volunteer to have drop-off sites at their own residences. And so hopefully you can find a yard that is a little bit closer than making a trip to the food bank or your church. Uh, but please consider joining. Um, if you just want vegetable gardening information, I also encourage you to go to the website and we have recently updated the website and there's so much on there, it's overwhelming. So growandgivecolorado.org, love to have you participate in any way that you can. So what we'll cover tonight is a number of topics. I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of farmers markets because it's actually really interesting. Then we'll go into the benefits and then we'll focus a little bit on the market that I help run with Emily Alleygood and the Master Gardeners in Larimer County. And then I will finish up with how you can most effectively shop at a farmer's market, what you can prepare for and what you can expect. To start with what the farmer's market is, a, a brief definition, and this according to the USDA, it's simply a multi-stall market in which farmers and producers sell agricultural products. It is mostly focused on fruits and vegetables, so produce, but it also includes a lot of our meats, breads, cheeses, and then other specialty items. Some markets are very specific in what type of vendors that they accept, and so you'll see perhaps only agricultural products. At other markets, you might have a sprinkling of jewelry or other crafts, and so it really does depend on how markets are operated. And I will say running a farmer's market, there are no set rules on how you run a market. It really just has to follow what your beliefs and your principles are. But really what a market is, is it's a direct farmer to consumer venue. So a farmer is growing those products or a person is baking the bread and then they sell it directly to the consumer. So there's no middlemen involved. And so a lot of times, the farmer, the producer, the grower is going to benefit more because they are getting direct pay that can then can support their entities. And so it's a really cool concept. And of course, I'm guessing that most of you have visited a farmer's market in your life. The history of farmer's markets is actually really cool. It dates back to over 5,000 years ago when the ancient Egyptians set up some sort of farmer's market, if you will, along the Nile. And so these agricultural producers, these farmers, they gathered along the Nile, then started to sell their goods. And so there are some ancient depictions of what these farmers markets look like. And of course, they weren't called that. They were probably just markets or gathering places where people could then buy goods. Uh, but it is really interesting that farmers markets have a very long history over 5,000 years ago where we had this start. 
in the United States, the first farmer's market, and the history is a little bit nebulous, it's not quite clear, uh, but the first farmer's market actually traces back to the Boston area in 1634. And so that is when the first farmer's market actually started in the United States. And of course, this makes sense because as people immigrated over to the United States, they of course populated the Eastern seaboard and of course, Boston is one of our oldest cities in the nation. And so that is kind of where the first market began. But really the history of farmers markets, the first official market, if you will, with a dedicated space actually happened in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And this is the oldest running farmers market in the nation. It still operates today. And of course it looks very different than it did back in 1730 when it opened in Lancaster. But what the city planners did is they actually dedicated a portion of the city, or it was a township at that time, to 120 square foot area in the center of town. And so when towns were built, they had these central marketplaces or these central squares. And part of that was dedicated to a market. And in the official charter for Lancaster County, it said that a market must be operated two days a week in this area in order for Lancaster to then have any sort of city or town ordinance. So two markets in each week in the lot of the ground that was agreed upon by those founders. And so farmers would cart their wares in from outside of the town. Of course, the, the town was a central gathering place where you had the church and you had some other small businesses, but the farmers would gather with their carts and buggies and then that's where they would sell their goods um, to the settlers in the area, which is a really neat thing. What it looks like today is very different. It's actually become an indoor market space, but it is still operating. So almost 300 years later, the oldest farmer's market is still in existence. And if you've been to the Lancaster market, please let me know. I'm sure it's amazing. But of course, they have a lot of the different goods that they probably sold back then. So some local meats and um, vegetables, some goods, probably some soaps and things like that. Just think of things that people needed as they were getting settled in America. So it is a really neat thing that this market has been going on for nearly 300 years. So the Lancaster market and then others as they slowly started to pop up um, where people were settling became really an important part of the US uh, residents life. We of course didn't have a King Supers or a Whole Foods back then. And so these markets really were a place for people to buy their goods that they needed for the week. And then as towns started to become more popular, grocery stores started taking over, but these markets were really an essential part of towns and cities in order to start to share the, produ the products that the farmers were growing. Also curb markets were very common. And so if a person just had a few extra watermelons to sell, they could pull up to a curb and then just sell their goods. There was a lot less re regulation and restrictions then. Um, I'm thinking of the food trucks and the food carts and how they're only allowed to park along a curb for a couple hours. There wasn't any of that back in the 17, 1800s. And so there was a lot more loose rules and regulations and it really did allow farmers on a smaller scale to get their products to people before they spoiled. That was the biggest thing. So I love this photo. This was actually taken in St. Paul, Minnesota in the 1900s. Uh, but you can see how they had a fruit cart and they would just really drive to any town where they could then sell those goods. So this would be considered a curb market. But then grocery stores started to become more common and it became part of a lot of the settled townships across the United States. And so as grocery stores became more popular, of course, these were standing structures that offered a lot of goods and wares on a more consistent basis. And the need for farmers markets kind of went away. So they didn't have to have as many farmers markets because grocery stores were able to supply people with what they needed. And if people ran out of flour, they could run to, just like we do today, to the local grocery store to buy their flour. And it wasn't until about 1948 when the USDA finally started inventory of the farmers markets. And back in 1948, believe it or not, there were only six farmer's markets on the books. And it was interesting that they were all located in California. So even if you think about today with California and their very ideal climate, 
A lot of our fruits and vegetables during the winter months still come from California. And so it makes sense that these farmers markets were started in California and that they were able to support uh, those markets and have this difference from a grocery store. So six markets back in 1948. And of course we have grown immensely since then. And farmers markets really didn't come back into popularity until the 1970s. Uh, I was born in 1980, so I missed the 70s craze, but it was a big health craze. And so I'm sure many of you, if you were around in the 1970s, you experienced this, but it seems like this comes up quite often. And one could say that we're actually in a health craze now. But the first major health craze started in the 1970s where there were you know, recommendations that people become more healthy, that you should join a gym, that you should begin jogging, uh, that you should start eating better foods. And so that's when we started seeing a lot of gyms, a lot of rec centers start to open. And there was requirements from the CDC and from our doctors that we should just try to eat healthier, which of course included more produce. And so as a result, we actually started to have this influx of farmers markets that started to open. And people then started to fall in love with the idea of farmers markets. They thought of them as quaint, as areas where they could visit on a weekday or weekend afternoon and start to meet with their community and start to support farmers. And so it really maybe started off as something that you were supposed to do because it was healthy, uh, but then it turned into something where it actually became a community group and an organization. And the great thing about farmers markets, and this still exists today, is that they offer a lot of different options. They offer a lot of different healthy food choices, and really the focus back with those early 70s and 80s farmers markets was to offer food that was quick and easy. And so we, of course, had more people entering the workforce, a lot more women were entering the workforce and, you know, having options that were quick and easy and healthy for their families was an important aspect. And so that was a really interesting concept that this health craze then encouraged more markets. And then after that, the farmers market scene really exploded. Uh, the USDA has this really fun graph you can see here that in 1994, remember we had only six markets back in 1948. In 1994, there were about 1700 markets on the books and that increased by about 300% in up to 2008 where we had about 4,600 and we've since almost doubled that amount. Um, I couldn't find the latest and the greatest information, but I know that our market fills out paperwork for the USDA every year on how many markets just a little bit about our market, how many sales we have, how long we've been in existence. And it's very interesting that now nationally there's about 8,600. The one thing that you should really keep in mind though is that it is tough to operate and manage a farmer's market. So as soon as a market opens, if you are successful after five years, you usually stay open, but those first five years are really touch and go. And a lot of markets close, Last year with COVID regulations and just having to jump through a lot of hoops, we saw some markets close. And so I wouldn't be surprised if that number actually dropped in 2020. And hopefully we'll see a little bit more of markets joining the force in 2021. Uh, but really the big boom was between 1994 and 2008. And again, we've increased about double since then. So there's a lot of markets across the nation. And if you're wondering where they're located, a lot of them are in California, no surprise, right? So California, again, has that balmy, wonderful climate. They have fruit year round, they have produce available year round. And so it makes sense that they have a lot of farmers markets, but there's actually a significant number in New York. Um, that's a big farming community. So perhaps not, you know, New York City, but if you go outside the city, um, beautiful farmland. And then there's quite a few also in Michigan, Illinois and Ohio. Um, here in Colorado, we don't have quite as many, and of the ones that actually belong to the Colorado Farmers Market Association, which is kind of our mothership, if you will, um, you can choose to become part of the Colorado Farmers Market Association, and the market I'm affiliated with, we are a member, and so there are 56 members in Colorado at this time. Now, we have other markets, of course, that are operating 
um, and how they define themselves as a farmer's market or how they operate could be very, very different. Um, but these organizations and what I will say for the Colorado Farmers Market Association is that they help give us guidance. They provide insurance to markets at a reduced rate and they really provide a lot of structure. It's also a good network. So if we run into questions or problems, uh, the members affiliated with the Colorado Farmers and Market Association are readily available to help troubleshoot. So we do have more than 56 markets in Colorado. These are just the members of the Farmers Market Association. A few facts that are, I thought, really interesting and fun. 21% of those 8,600 markets actually operate year round. And there have been efforts, at least in the Fort Collins area, to have a year round market. We don't have one yet. And so we have summer markets and then a winter market. Um, if you look at those as a whole, there is a market available most weeks out of the year, but we're not a permanent a year-round structure like the Lancaster market. For those markets, Saturday is the most common operating day. About 50% of the markets are actually open on Saturdays. And the majority, the vast majority, there seems to be like one lone market that doesn't sell fruits and vegetables. So almost every single market that you visit nationally is going to sell fruits and vegetables. That tends to be the bread and butter. And I think that's also what people think about when they you know, think about a farmer's market. A lot of the markets do accept federal programs such as SNAP. And of those, about 75% of the markets that participate in federal food assistance programs are accepting SNAP. SNAP is the Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program, formerly known as Food Stamps. It has changed names to make everything confusing, uh, but SNAP is a commonly accepted thing. And it is something that I know our market is working on to encourage SNAP customers to shop with us. And it's also a really good national effort as well, because we don't want to think that markets are unattainable or unavailable to those who um, are using SNAP. We want to make it as inclusive a place as possible. And on average, about 900 families shop at a farmer's market each day. That's a national number. I will say for the Larimer County Farmer's Market, we see roughly maybe 1,500 to 2,500 people come through. We take attendance counts. We don't base it on family, uh, but just know that farmer's markets are very popular. And again, it will depend on the size of the market, the area that you're in, as to how big you, you have. Um, in terms of size, the Madison Farmers Market in Wisconsin is one of the biggest, along with the Portland Farmers Market. Here in Colorado, the Boulder Farmers Market is probably the largest, um, but I am proud to say that the Larimer County Farmers Market is the oldest in Northern Colorado. Moving on to why farmers markets are important, and this probably isn't new information to you if you have spent any time at farmers markets, but it is good just to remember why you're there and who you're supporting. So starting off with stimulating the local economy. So this is really beneficial on several levels. And of course, last year when we had COVID and things were shutting down, it was a really wonderful blessing that Governor Polis decided that farmers markets were an essential business that really did help markets stay afloat. We had to do a lot of things in order to make the markets happen, um, but it is a livelihood for a lot of our farmers and for our vendors. So having it as an essential business was extremely important. And for farmers or for vendors who actually sell locally, they have about 13 full-time jobs per $1 million in sales. And that's a huge thing. So think of all of the processes that a farmer does in order to sell locally. So of course they have people helping plant and maintain the farms. They have people picking, making sure the produce is safe after picking, washing it, packaging it, bringing it to the farmer's market. And then they would have staff that would actually staff the farmer's market. It is not an easy endeavor to be a vendor at a farmer's market. Um, there have been times and we've had people say, oh gosh, it's twice the amount of work. It is so much easier just to sell to a middleman who can then distribute your goods. But there is something about making those local connections to the community and to the members where you're living. So 
Farms that don't sell locally only have about three full-time jobs. So that's a big thing. So it's stimulating jobs in our economy and businesses like a farmer's market, because really a farmer's market is a business. They return as much as three times of their sales back into the local atmosphere, the local economy um, compared to chain stores. And so that's a really big thing too, is that they're reinvesting those monies, those dollars generated back into their local communities. And so the farmer's market that we run, the Larimer County Farmer's Market, we do collect a portion of sales from our vendors, six and a half percent of their total gross sales each day. And then we actually pay sales tax on those numbers. So each day if a farmer makes $100, they pay six and a half percent or $6.50. We then pay sales tax on that amount and that amount goes back into the city of Fort Collins. And so last year we paid about $24,000 in sales tax, which of course is benefiting the city as a whole with infrastructure, with promoting local business and all of those things that sales tax does. Markets also encourage people to spend their money locally. And that's a big thing too, is that if you go to a farmer's market, I'm sure that many of you have done your shopping at the market and then maybe you go out for breakfast right? So you go out for breakfast at a nearby um, restaurant. Or in the case of where our market is located in Old Town Fort Collins, you might come to the market and say, gosh, I need to go get a spatula at the cupboard. So then you are paying it forward by then visiting other local businesses. And so it is a win-win for everyone. You're benefiting the farmers by purchasing their goods, and then you're usually benefiting the local economy by shopping elsewhere when you're in the area. And markets support small businesses. This is the biggest thing, and we're really proud that our market is what we consider to be an incubator for small businesses. It's really a hub where businesses can get their first foot in the door. We have a program in extension, the um, Building Farmers Program, where it's anyone who's interested in maybe selling or growing or having a small business, it gives them all the tools that they can use then to start their business. And we are really proud to then have these graduates of that program come and sell with us at the farmer's market if that's part of their business plan. So a lot of businesses get their start. We've had some extremely successful vendors that not only went through the building farmers program, but then also started selling with us at the farmer's market. So one really proud story I love to share is Mitzi. She's the person in the middle here holding the beautiful bouquet of flowers. So Mitzi Davis is a Larimer County master gardener and she's been selling at the farmer's market for close to 20 years. She's been a very long time vendor with us. She has really taken her business to the next level. And so she started it as she was still working full time and she always grew some cut flowers in her backyard and then she would sell at the farmer's market. Since she's retired, she's really invested a lot more into her business. She's worked with an intern who's the gentleman on the left. She has another um, employee slash volunteer that works with her, that's Stacy. And Mitzi has completely transformed her very urban backyard, not a huge space, into this beautiful cut flower growing area where she's growing dahlias and zinnias and snapdragons, and then she's selling those at the farmer's market. She's put in a lot of resources to have uh, flowers earlier in the season and longer into the fall. And she's also started selling other goods as well. So expanding products. And I'm really happy to report that last year she had her largest sales day ever at the farmer's market. And it's just something that she really enjoys um, talking to Mitzi is just an absolute pleasure. She still maintains her status as a master gardener volunteer. So when she's not running her booth, she's often volunteering at the market as a master gardener. Uh, but it's one of those great success stories that we're really proud of. And she got her start at the farmer's market and has really become one of those pillars of the market community where she's there regularly on a consistent basis and has such a great following. So. Um, that's a one fun success story from our farmer's market. Markets also preserve farmland and local agriculture. So I think no matter where you are in the country, you're probably seeing a lot of land turn into housing developments. And so this is a way to help maintain some of our roots of the agriculture industry. 
Farmland is rapidly decreasing. There is estimates that an acre is going away every minute. And so supporting farmers, no matter what scale, if they're a backyard farm like Missy or if they're 500 acres like some of our fruit growers, supporting and coming to the farmer's markets really does help preserve that heritage in supporting uh, people who do want to continue with agriculture. And about a quarter of all farmers that sell at farmer's markets, that is their sole source of income, or they actually dedicate themselves to selling at farmer's markets for their sole source of income. And so it's a really big deal that you show up on a consistent basis. A lot of markets are open rain or shine. Very proud to say that in my tenure of helping with the Larimer County Farmer's Market, we're going on, oh gosh, 15 years now, this will be my 16th season. The market has been open every single day. We have seen rain, hail, snow, um, smoke last year. Um, we had a flood that happened, of course, in the Fort Collins area a few years ago, and we have been open every Saturday because the farmers have their products available. They need to sell it, and if we're open, people still show up. So don't let a little weather deter you from going to your farmer's market. You can make it a quick trip um, and get your favorites, but just know that a lot of farmers really do depend on markets for their livelihood. Also, Farmers markets means your food is traveling fewer miles. It's less uh, fossil fuels that are going into our environment and you're also buying it at the peak of freshness. So if you've never really had sweet corn that was either picked that morning or even the night before, it really does make a difference. Fresh sweet corn versus what you can maybe get at the grocery store that's traveled from who knows versus just being picked a few hours ago is a huge difference. And one thing is that a lot of our farmers also have CSAs. It's called Community Supported Agriculture. And so if you have a favorite vendor that every week you buy your tomatoes, your lettuce, and your eggplant from, you can actually support the farmer more by buying a CSA, which means that you pay money up front. And then the theory is, is that you will get then your share as the crops start to come in. What that does is buying a share in January or February assures the farmer a little bit of money to then invest in products and to invest in crops and to get things planted. Um, you are taking a little bit of a risk because there are things that happen such as hail and other environmental things that could occur that might destroy the crops. But what you're doing is you are putting an investment with that farmer and then you benefit later on in the season by getting a share. So a lot of the farmers are doing CSAs. Um, they have different structures where you might pick up your box that is pre-packed or some of, the, some of the farmers actually have more of a, a credit option where you pay $300 and then you come and you get what you want at the farmer's market and they just deduct it from your account. So consider investing in farmers that way. And markets really do increase access to fresh foods. And I think this is why we're all there. We all often want food at the peak of freshness. And what's really interesting, I think there's a belief, um, and this is a myth that is still perpetuated in society, that farmers markets tend to be more expensive. And what's been found by a lot of different research is that farmers markets are usually less expensive than grocery stores because again they're cutting out that middleman because you are buying directly from the farmer. Now depending on the crop, depending on how special it is, depending if it's organically or conventionally produced, there might be an increase. But if you're able to buy in bulk or you want to buy a box of peaches, that's often going to be less expensive per pound than buying it at a grocery store. And what's also great is that markets, and I mentioned this earlier, a lot of them uh, participate in federal supported nutrition programs or food insecurity programs like SNAP, like WIC, or nutrition programs for seniors. And so we are really proud to participate in SNAP. Some of our vendors also participate in the WIC program directly. And so that's another way that we can get fresh food for people who um, are on a limited income. Speaking of SNAP, just wanted to share a little bit more about this. Uh, back in 2017, I again don't have the updated numbers, but back in 2017, an estimated $22 million 
of SNAP was spent at farmers markets, which is really incredible. And so if you're not familiar with the SNAP program, you do have to qualify. It's based on your income level. And each month you would get an amount deposited into your SNAP account based on not only your income, but the size of your family. And so you can then use your SNAP benefits at farmers markets. <clears throat> and really it's just like a debit card. So you can come to the market, you can run your uh, SNAP transaction with the market booth. And then in general, you're going to get tokens or some sort of currency that you can then spend with vendors. SNAP is specific to fresh, fro uh, fresh produce, to cheeses, meats, really anything that's edible. It does not include any sort of hot items and then beauty products or dog treats. It does though, which is really great, it does include plants that can be used for growing food. So you can use SNAP benefits to buy tomato starts or pepper plants um, and things like that, which is fun because then you can also grow those at your residence. Last year in 2020, we had about $11,000 spent uh, via the SNAP program. And this was an increase of about 30% from 2019. And that was on par with what we saw across the nation, that as COVID started to happen, of course, people started to lose their jobs. The economy was fairly unstable. People started to apply for SNAP benefits. But the great thing is, is that they still supported farmers markets by using their SNAP benefits at the market. And the great thing too about SNAP is that there's often matching programs that will then help stretch those food dollars further. So in Colorado, we have the Double Up Food Bucks program, which is through Live Well, which has since changed names and I should know the new name. Uh, but the Double Up Food Bucks program is actually a grant-based program that we apply for every year. And we can match up to $20 in Double Up Food Bucks every Saturday for SNAP participants. So people will get their $20 in SNAP that they can use to buy meats, cheese, bread, eggs, and then they get $20 in Double Up, which is specific to fresh fruits and vegetables. So that also helps stretch their food dollars a little bit further. And it's a great program that we've been participating in since 2014. And we've been proudly accepting SNAP since 2007. So that's a great thing. Um, and we'd love to share that information. Another thing farmers markets do is that they support healthy communities. And it's been found that people who shop at farmers markets interact with people three times as much as going to the grocery store. So I know when I go to the grocery store, I'm very focused. I know what I need to get. I know which aisles they're in and I do my shopping and I'm on my way. But at farmers markets, you tend to lollygag. You tend to take it all in. You tend to talk to the people and say, wow, what scones do you have available today? and you interact quite a bit more. So for people who are maybe having some social isolation issues, going to a farmer's market is a great thing. It also gets you engaged with your local community. Um, at our farmer's market and at others across the nation, there's often nonprofits or community groups. Last year that really was on the decline, but we were able to have the Raptor Society come and visit with us. So we had some birds of prey at the market. We're also really proud to be a CSU extension program. So we've had local CSU clubs and organizations come. We have uh, local musicians who've played with us. And so it really does become a community atmosphere. And again, that nutritious aspect with having your food picked earlier, just days earlier, even a day earlier is so much more beneficial because produce is picked at the peak of freshness, the nutrient levels are at their highest. And so we're not waiting for a truck from California to come and for those bell peppers to ripen. They're allowed to ripen on the plant and then they're sold to you directly. And really at the end of the day, farmers markets are just plain fun. Uh, what we love most is seeing our kids, seeing the kids grow up, seeing the puppies grow into dogs, and then what we call local celebrities. And so last summer, President Joyce McConnell, the CSU president, visited the market on a regular basis. Sometimes it was hard to spot her because, of course, everyone was wearing masks. And uh, But there she is with her dill and her fresh flowers from Mitzi. And, you know, it's just fun to see the mayor of Fort Collins walk through or some of our elected officials or just to see people who have been coming for 15 years. Really, the market becomes more like a family than anything else. And so having kids play in the bubbles, we have special guests like uh, Winston Churchill, the pig, 
just the best name ever. Um, we've had cats, we've had birds, we have had, of course, dogs at the farmer's market. And so you never know what is going to come uh, during the season or who's going to show up. Uh, and it's just really a lot of fun. And it is a great thing um, and a wonderful part of my job to run the farmer's market. A few other pictures. Uh, in previous years, we've had story time. We've done uh, veggie exercises. So we did a whole series at the farmer's market of how you can use oversized squash to exercise your muscles. So Tony, who is our superstar master gardener volunteer is doing some chest presses with his yellow squash. Um, you can also do tricep curls if you're interested. Uh, we have dancing and then, you know, we've done events like knit in public and we try to have events during the summer months. And so we are very optimistic that this summer we can have a couple events. We are tentatively scheduling the chicken Olympics to happen this fall. So because of the Olympics happening in Japan, we hope to have the chicken Olympics with our local chicken athletes. They're in my backyard. I don't know how athletic they are, uh, but we hope to have them come to the farmer's market and do various things. So if you can join us for that Saturday, it will be heavily publicized. I just wanna talk a little bit more about our farmer's market. And this market is to me, of course, very special. It's one I've been affiliated with uh, since the day I was hired. And I always laugh because I was given all of these duties as the horticulture agent of teaching and educating people and then it was almost said out of the corner of my then boss's mouth, oh, by the way, you run a farmer's market. Okay, I don't know what that means, but okay. Uh, but this market is very special. It started back in 1975 with a group of master gardeners who just wanted to provide a venue for anyone who had extra produce to sell it. And so that was the whole goal of the farmer's market. And today it has really morphed into something that is so much more special and really bringing an impact into our community. We've moved around a lot. So depending on when you were at school at CSU, the market may have been in a different location. Uh, we used to, the market actually opened uh, by the old Fort Collins High School on Remington. That was in its early years. Then we moved to the Larimer County Courthouse until so the courthouse went underwent renovations. Then we moved behind Tony's Bar, which was a very interesting experience on Saturday mornings. I'll just leave it at that. And then once the courthouse renovations were finished, we moved back to the courthouse and that's where we are. So our current location is at 200 West Oak, um, right at Oak and Howes, the Larimer County Courthouse. And that's where we've been for about the last uh, 10 years or so. And the goal of our farmer's market is we want to give everybody who anybody who wants to sell with us a chance, as long as they do meet our qualifications. Um, we try to give kids a chance to sell if they have a unique product. And we really don't care about the size of the farm or the quantity of goods that you want to sell. If you meet our qualifications, we definitely want to give you a chance. This year we had record breaking vendors apply with us. So our um, application opened in January, we closed it in March, and we ended up accepting 98 people, which is more than we've ever accepted. And then we've had to wait list 14 people just because we don't have the space. We're still operating under a few COVID regulations where vendors have to be spaced six feet apart. And so because of that, it takes up obviously more space in the parking lot. But do plan, if you shop with us this summer, do plan to see about 60 to 70 vendors on a Saturday. You will see vendors creatively placed. We'll just leave it at that. So not necessarily within the parking lot, but in other areas as well. What's unique about our market is that we've always been a CSU extension program. We are the only farmer's market in Colorado that we know of that is operated and managed by the CSU Extension Office. We're really proud of this. And I will say that it is just Emily and I. Emily is a 0.6 FTE, I'm a 0.1. And so we don't even have a full-time person. So we could not do this market without our amazing Master Gardener volunteers. We have eight Master Gardeners who support us every Saturday. They do everything from putting up tents to emptying the trash at the end of the day and everything in between. And what's really unique about the market is that all of our profits and proceeds go back into supporting extension programs in our community. 
So it supports the Master Gardener program, it supports teaching efforts, and really this money is so valuable to our office that we have the ability then to expand our outreach into the community. The other thing is that we're a growers only market and that's really unique and that what that means is that all of the products have to be made, produced, or grown by the vendor. So they have to be baked by the vendor. Uh, they have to be grown by the vendor. We don't allow any resale of products. And this rule is based on the markets that you sell at. So if this is important to you, that the person you're buying from actually makes the product or bakes the product, just ask, you know, how is this grown? And really think about what time of year it is and what you're seeing for sale at the farmer's market. But ours doesn't allow the resale of any items. What else is unique? Well, you can get free gardening advice and free information on how to can or preserve things safely at our farmer's market from our master gardener volunteers and the master food safety advisors. A lot of the farmer's markets do have master gardeners on hand to answer your gardening questions. That is not unique. Um, but just know that another component of our farmer's market is that master gardeners actually help run the market itself. We do allow kids to sell with us. So we have Levi who has sold with us for several years. His sign is great. He recycles it every year and he just crosses off how old he is. So he started selling with us when he was seven. Uh, last year he was 11. And we love having kids participate. It teaches them a lot of good business skills and interacting with the public. And again, our market wants everybody to have the chance to sell if they do qualify. Uh, we also have a couple unique programs, one of which is the Market Days for Older Adults, which I'll talk about, and then the Market Ambassadors, which is really making the market an inclusive place to shop, regardless of language, regardless of where you're at in the community. So briefly about Market Days for Older Adults, this was started in 2019 as a response to uh, food insecurity issues that we were seeing across Colorado. And it's focused specifically on low-income older adults. Uh, in Larimer County alone, about 31% of low-income, or I'm sorry, 31% of older adults are facing food insecurity over the age of 55. Uh, Colorado currently doesn't have any sort of senior nutrition programs. There are programs available nationally, but Colorado is not currently participating in them. So what this program does is it provides fresh produce to low-income older adults that they can then consume and help increase their overall fruit and vegetable consumption. Each bag contains 15 to 20 dollars worth of produce that is purchased directly from our farmers market vendors. Last year in 2020 we provided just over 1100 bags of produce to people who needed it and this in turn generated about $25,000 back to our farmers. And so we're purchasing produce generally more at a wholesale rate, packing the bags, giving it to people who need it, and then that money is going back directly back to our farmers. We're able to do this through some grants and through some sponsorships, um, but that is where we're at. We're always looking for people who are interested in supporting this program, and it is completely powered by volunteers. So if this is something that pulls at your heartstrings, if this is a way that you feel you can donate back to the community, we would encourage you to buy a bag. Uh, $15 buys a bag of produce for someone that usually lasts about seven to 10 days. Um, it gets nutritious food in the hands of people who need it, and it also supports your local farmers. So there is that information. You can also do the QR code that will take you directly to the PayPal link. Just consider donating. Just know that it's all going to a good cause. And we're also really proud of our community connections. So as I mentioned, we are a CSU extension organization. We have strong roots to, of course, CSU. So we have clubs and organizations that come. Uh, we love having local musicians there. Usually we have our farmer's market because it falls usually right around Flag Day and having the color guard present. And it's just unfortunate that the last couple of years that has taken a backseat, but as we get uh, more back to operating as normal, we're going to have more of those events. So to wrap uh, in the last few minutes here, not to wrap things up, but just how to maximize your market experience. So the biggest thing 
is know what's in season. Really think about what you're seeing at farmer's markets and if it's something that should be at your farmer's market. If you're in Colorado and you see bananas being sold, think about if bananas grow in Colorado. They don't. So really think about if it makes sense of what you're seeing is actually what's being sold. The CDA has a great Colorado crop calendar, calendar that can give you some tips about when things are in season. Um, of course, we have vendors that are doing season extensions, so they're using high tunnels or greenhouses to get an additional uh, month or two on either end. And so we might see tomatoes uh, this weekend because we have some growers who are growing them in greenhouses. But in general, tomatoes are not a crop that we see in our gardens until usually sometime in July. When you shop, know your local rules and regulations. So I would encourage you to visit your market's website or social media pages to really get an idea of what to expect. So when are the hours? Is it dog friendly? Some markets are not. We are proud to be dog friendly. Um, what are the COVID rules and regulations? Where is parking available? What currency does the market accept? These are all things that are good to know before you shop. And then if you have vendors that you love or that you have found on social media, check out their sites to see either what they're selling that week or where they're located in the market. It can be sometimes hard to find vendors. Local staff will always, of course, help you and tell you where vendors are located. But then also find the vendors' Facebook or Instagram pages. We have a lot of vendors that do local sales. Uh, one of our vendors this Saturday is selling some of their granola at 50% off, which is a great deal. So we will post that information, as will they on their social media sites. And then sign up for emails so then your vendors can tell you this week we have the first crop of strawberries or get your early peaches this Saturday. They'll let you know what they have available. If you want to, you can plan your weekly meals before you go. Sometimes when you go to the farmer's market, it's kind of a free for all. You just buy whatever you feel like, uh, but it is a good idea to have a shopping list. And so if there's specific things that you want to get, you can then definitely get those into your bag. It's also very easy to splurge on things you may not need. And that would be the biggest complaint that the master gardeners have when they volunteer at the farmer's market, that they come, they spend $50, and they say, gosh, I came to volunteer, but I ended up buying all of these great things. Uh, just also know that some items may not be always available. So be ready to substitute. If you go in really wanting zucchini and zucchini isn't available, maybe there's another vegetable that will work in your dish. And then again, that comes back to knowing what's in season and when it's going to be available. We do encourage you to bring your own bags. Uh, this also, of course, helps with our environmental efforts um, and reusable totes are a market's best friend. Also, the tote should be large enough to accommodate all of your purchases. If you decide to buy 12 ears of corn, that's going to take up a lot of space in your bag. So those big market bags that are comfortable to haul around are a really good thing. Uh, there are usually some plastic bags available and sometimes the markets will have reusable totes either for sale or for free as part of a promotional event. When you get there, I would encourage you to do an initial walkthrough. So do a lap, get an idea of what vendors are around, what they're selling. You can kind of take stock of what prices are. Um, now, if there is a hot button item, if there's something that you know is in short supply, or maybe the bakery only sells six loaves of cinnamon raisin bread, you may want to buy that right away. Uh, but you could do an initial walkthrough just to see what's available. And then talk to the vendors. If you have questions, they love nothing more than having conversations with you about their practices, their farms, the cultivars that you're growing, um, the different types of tomatoes, the flavor. They want to talk with you and engage with you because then they help build those relationships with you in the community. In terms of currency, a lot of vendors will accept some sort of online payment. A lot of vendors will also have credit cards, but there are some that still only do cash. So be prepared for different types of currency. Um, and I would say this is a big thing. Don't bring just $20 bills or $50 bills, especially early in the morning. It's really hard for vendors to break that big of a bill. Um, so try to bring smaller change, some fives, some tens, some ones. That will really help out the vendors. Um, and I know that when you go to the bank, you only get 20s, uh, but just keep that in mind. 
Some of the markets will sell market currency that you can use. Um, our market has stopped doing that just because of last year with the risk of exchanging paper. We have stopped doing that. And plus our vendors really stepped up and accepted some sort of online payment that seemed to work plus cash. So just be aware that usually cash is always fine, but there are some vendors who can also do plastic or online currency. Shopping early, the crowds will be less. It will be cooler outside. The vendors tend to be a little bit more fresh um, and selection is going to be best. But shopping late, you might get more deals. Sometimes there are vendors who don't want to take home um, you know, extra bread. And so they'll sell you a loaf of bread two for one. Uh, so just know that there are benefits to both shopping late or early. Uh, I like the early part of the markets. I think that it's there's just something a little bit more, um, I don't know, it's just, it's just excitement. There's always a buzz early in the morning. And then as the market goes on and things get a little bit hot, um, as we get a lot more crowded, you know, there, there becomes some of those factors too. But shopping early is always a good thing, but you have to roll out of bed earlier on a Saturday morning. And I would encourage you to try something new. So if there's something that you haven't bought before, give it a try. Maybe there's a new mushroom variety that might go great with the steak that you just bought, or you were on the market looking for early girl tomatoes, but they don't have any. So what is another variety that you could consider trying? Um, one of our vendors sells the most amazing pie. And she had a blueberry lavender pie that I didn't even know I needed in my life, but it was absolutely delicious. So give those new things a chance. Um, you might learn to love them. You might learn to incorporate them into your future meals. Also consider buying in bulk to enjoy later. So Colorado peaches, I think that is one of the biggest things that people come to farmers markets for in the summer months. And there is nothing better than defrosting some peaches to incorporate into baked goods or to make into a quick jam in the middle of the winter months. Um, you know, we have a, a pepper roaster at the market. I know many people do uh, throughout Colorado. And so roasting those chilies to make pork green chili any time of the season is also really special. And also, again, buying in bulk is going to be more economical for you. You obviously have to do something, whether it's freezing or preserving it. Um, but buying in bulk is often a cheaper price per pound than just buying a bag of peaches. And markets are fun for the entire family. So our market really strives to have family friendly activities, whether it's our end of the season fall festival or having a bubble machine. That was the big hit last year. We just had a bubble machine and kids and dogs both loved it. Um, buying flowers, you know, buying a pie to bring to an event that you're going to or to a dinner. All of those are really special things that you can do with the family and kids love to come. We have a popsicle vendor. So really it's a great place to not only introduce kids to local foods and to local agriculture, but also give them five bucks and have them pick out something that they want to enjoy or something new that they can try. So I do encourage you to get fresh at your local farmer's market. Come join us, if you will, if you're in Fort Collins, anytime between May 22nd and October 30th, Emily and I and our Local loyal master gardeners will always be there every Saturday at the courthouse from nine to one. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. And again, really take advantage of your farmer's markets, enjoy them, talk to your vendors, and really be sure to thank them for what they do because they work tirelessly to really make uh, local agriculture a possibility. So with that, Rachel, I'll take any questions if there are any. Awesome. Thank you so much, Allison. I am now craving a lavender pie that I didn't know I needed as well. So thanks a lot. <laughs> um, it doesn't look like we have any questions. We'll give people a minute here. If you want to ask Allison any questions, uh, we've got a captive audience and we have Allison here. So if you have a question for her, we'd love to take that. We'll give you just a minute to pop those in the chat or the Q&A feature if you have them. Or you can just tell us what you're most looking forward to purchasing at your local farmer's market this year. I, apparently pie is now top of my list. <laughs> Always the top of the list. Oh, yes. Happy. I really don't know. 
And while we're waiting for any questions, um, I am about to put the survey link in the chat. So please feel free to share your feedback with us. Let us know what else you'd like to see. And also thanks to our session sponsors, the Fort Collins Area Chamber of Commerce and NOCO Virtual Farmers Market. Definitely uh, check out their websites as well. I'm not seeing any questions in the chat. So I, you must have just answered every question anyone has ever had about a farmer's market, Allison. <laughs> I do see one from Jan saying, how do you find farmer's markets? And so that's a great question. If you're in Colorado, you can go to the Colorado Farmers Market Association. They list the member markets. And so you can find that map. Um, also, usually uh, there's some articles. So the Colorado in Fort Collins just published an article about the farmers markets that were opening. So there are online resources available to find your local farmers market. Um, but consider finding that or call your extension office because more than likely they know the scoop on your local markets as well. Awesome, thanks for catching that. Sorry, Jan didn't mean to not ask your question, but that's a great one and definitely Utilize your resources to find an awesome local farmer's market to enjoy this summer. Do you have any final parting words for us this evening, Allison? No, but please hit us up. We'd love to see you. If you do stop by our farmer's market, please stop by and say hello. Um, I know Rachel plans to be there as often as she can. And you know, if you come back for a football game or ag day or any of those things, we are always open. We'd love to see you and support our local CSU alumni. So yes, please stop by. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time, Allison. I wish you a great opening day this upcoming Saturday at the Larimer County's Farmers Market and check it out, everybody. In the meantime, have a wonderful evening. Take care. Stay stalwart. Go Rams. Bye. Go Rams. Bye. Woo. <laughs>